Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 1.2. Hopefully you already saw lecture 1.1 uh, on taxonomy natural selection. So now we're going to talk about the levels of organization and we're going to talk about some characteristics of living organisms. So to start it off, um, we're going to start with biology. So bio means life and then um, ology or Logos means the study of. So in terms, um, when you combine this, biology is a study of life. So that's why biology encompasses so many different areas. Um, that's why you can study a uh, bachelor's in biology and then from that going to vet school, going to dental school, going to medical school, you go into marine biology, you can go um, work with in, with plants, you can go work with different animals, you can do research. There's so many areas that you can go into because it's literally the study of life. Okay. Um, so, since it's the study of life, we really need to know what makes something living or else we're not studying what's living. Okay, so what are a couple of characteristics that maybe that come up um, on top of your, of your head that makes something living? So what makes something living? Okay, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about in the first section today. Um, let me make this a little bold. So let's name a couple of characteristics that make something living. Okay, um, so there's eight of them that we're going to talk about. And we're going to split them up and talk about each one individually. So number one. Um, something living must be composed of cells. Um, it needs to be able to reproduce. It needs to grow and develop. Um, it needs to obtain and use energy. This is what we call metabolism. Oops. Um, it needs to respond to the environment. If you remember last class, um, that would be kind of natural selection, evolution, um, kind of being able to adapt to the changes. Remember Charles Darwin. And this is also a term we call homeostasis, which means a balance, maintaining a balance, maintaining a balance of glucose levels, maintaining a balance of our blood pressure, maintaining a balance in our body. Then we have um, another characteristic of something that's alive or a living organism is to have some sort of DNA, um, it could be RNA as well, um, as a universal uh, genetic code. It is the one that contains everything that our, our body needs. It is the one that contains our genes. It is the one that makes us so unique. Um, it can be, remember, bacteria or archaea. They have one cell, but they can have RNA in it. And Lastly, another characteristic, uh, evolving and adapting. So it's kind of similar to growing and developing um, or responding to the environment, but it needs to, to evolve and adapt. So these are seven basic characteristics that make something alive, okay? So we'll split them up and talk one by one. So composed of cells. So I'm gonna ahead and put some uh, subheaders in here. You can go ahead and write another one if you want, but we can, I'll just split them up in here. Okay, so we have um, unicellular versus multicellular. So unicellular um, composed of a single cell and multicellular. Let's make this like this. Let's see. I'm trying to find the ways to make it easier. Multicellular. And it's composed of many cells. So we are composed of many cells. So we are multicellular human beings. Multicellular. Okay. Composed of many cells. So we got over 85 types of cells in our body. We talk about T cells, about B cells. We talk about red blood cells, white blood cells. So we're composed of many, many, many cells, okay? 
and that's what makes us uh, unique or different from bacteria or, or different prokaryotes in that we are made up of many many cells so we're more a lot more complex okay um, here's an example a little have a little bacteria on the left prokaryote made of one big cell or a little smiley frog on the right made of many 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 cells all over all over the body so um, number two another characteristic was reproduction so we have asexual reproduction and we have sexual reproduction so this is a very simple term uh, but it's very important in, in biology asexual uh, just means um, the individual individual divides um, to produce genetically identical offspring Okay, so it's basically starting with one, splitting into two, two splitting into four, four into eight, with exactly the same DNA or RNA. Okay, dividing dividing into exactly the same offspring. Sexual reproduction, on the other hand, um, when you have a male and a female, and the gametes join to create a cycle or a little baby or a pre-baby, um, and then that divides into a new, genetically different offspring so it's not the same exact dna we're not exactly the same as our parents or our grandparents we have a combination of genes that makes us unique kind of what we're talking about in lecture one uh, great cycle so male and female gametes create a cycle forming genetically ident genetically different sorry So now, characteristic one, made of cells. Number two, reproduce. Um, number three, so actually here's an example of a sexual versus sexual reproduction. So we have this little amoeba here. Um, from one, split into two. We have two identical cells of the same one. And on the other hand, we have sexual reproduction, where you have two frogs, male and female, mating. The gametes create the cycle and eventually grows into an adult. And then the cycle is again into an adult finds its mate. So that's sexual reproduction versus asexual reproduction. Now, number three could be growth and development. So in order for an organism to be considered living, it needs to grow and develop. So remember, single cell, so organisms grow simply and increase in size. Um, so what does it mean by grow simply? So it's just pretty basic growth. Um, it's not really as complex as going through a whole life cycle from cycle to to an adult to to creating um, these gametes and everything. So it's it's just more basic um, than multicellular. So single cell simply or a simpler way um, and increase in size. And then multicellular organisms uh, have a more extensive development from a cycle to a mature organism. So it's just, it's really more complex. It's not as simple as just from one to two and, and that's it. You have to go through this whole life cycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, characteristic number four. Remember, if I'm going too fast, feel free to stop it, pause it, and write down your notes, fill them out completely if you need to. So. Number four, um, living organisms must obtain and use some form of energy. So remember, we have plants, um, we have photosynthesis, we have cellular respiration. So all living things obtain energy from their environment. We get them through food, um, plants we get them through the sun. So um, metabolism, which is something important, mainly in humans or in animals, is the sum of all chemical reactions in a living organism, okay? So, um, in order for something to be living, they need to obtain some form of energy. So we get it from food, um, and plants get it from, from the sun. So it's kind of photosynthesis and cellular respiration life cycle, which will go into detail in in the later weeks, probably like week eight or nine, if I don't 
if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So now we got number five. Mm. Responding to the environment or responding to stimuli. What is stimuli? Stimuli is just uh, a touch or some sort of change of the environment. So, for example, um, uh, organisms detect and respond to a stimulus. Um, so internal stimuli can be, for example, blood glucose level. Um, internal stimuli can be blood glucose. Um, levels we can have um, blood pressure it's going around we make sure you have it stable and that's what we call homeostasis it's a balance in our body um, external stimuli um, can be responding to touch responding to light to sound to heat so imagine touching a stove and not being able to respond to a hot stove not being able to respond to that heat Obviously, it's going to hurt and cause damage in the organism. So you have to be able to respond to the external stimuli. Okay? And that's you know, the characteristic of something that's living. Animals do it all the time. Um, and humans do it too. Plants respond as well. So, um, okay, so um, apparently I decided to split it into seven. So respond to uh, stimuli. And then um, we'll, we'll call six um, responding to the environment, okay, or maintaining home and spaces. Uh, apologize for that. So we need to be able to maintain this balance that we're talking about, okay? So, um, for example, um, as I was saying, homeostasis, it just means uh, the same state or a similar state or, or a balance that we have in our body. Same state or balance that we have. Um, there are certain conditions um, in organisms that they must keep constant at a specific level in order to survive. So we got our pH, we got our temperature, we got our blood glucose levels. What do you think now in times of, of COVID, everyone's checking temperatures. Um, that's when we're able to, to observe that change. Um, if there's a, a virus or anything inside that's changing um, our internal conditions or our homeostasis in our body. So um, that's organisms that are alive are able to maintain a certain balance inside of them, a certain balance of um, of different um, different processes inside their body. Okay? There's also something called allostasis, and that's actually pretty interesting. That's more of a, of a new balance that we create, and that's due to drugs, that's due to um, different... Um, different levels of, of uh, what's it called, of, of new transmitters in our brain. So the allostasis, allostasis can be, uh, for example, someone that takes some drugs and then all of a sudden the body wants or needs that um, specific amount of drugs, so they create this new balance, the allostasis, instead of the homeostasis. So it's not the balance that the body needs, it's the balance that we're feeding our brain, that we want this new balance in order for our brain or our body to feel right. Um, number seven, we're going to talk about DNA. So just briefly, um, organisms must have DNA or RNA, which is a genetic code. So it's really the most important thing of an organism. If it has no DNA or, or RNA, we really can't tell um, what it's made of. We really don't know um, how the proteins are made, how everything is created. So everything that's alive has some sort of DNA or RNA. And last but not least, um, we kind of we talked about in lecture one a little bit, is evolution. Uh, populations or organisms are able to evolve and adapt. So evolution occurs at a population level. So remember we talked a little bit about this um, in the last lecture, um, how organisms are able to adapt to their environment. Um, so here it talks about how adaptations or changes in the gene pool that make certain individuals better suited for to their environment. Now those individuals survive and reproduce more, passing on their adapt adaptive traits. So that's also a, 
another characteristic of a living organism being able to pass that on from generation to generation okay so now we're gonna jump into the levels of um, organization so it's just basically basically splitting it up into different sections so splitting everything that's on earth you can say from small to big just going at a scale so everything you study classes you take microbiology and you can take anatomy physiology so you're going from different levels of organizations chemistry which I'm going to talk about actually in week two about subatomic particles protons neutrons electrons things like that so we'll start with number one first and the smallest level subatomic particles um, so we have the atom that contains protons, neutrons, and electrons. That's basically the, the smallest we can get to. We can talk about string theory or anything like that, but that's in, in other classes. Um, so we have our little, little atom here, and that's, like I said, we're going to talk about this in week two, a little bit about um, the periodic table and things like that. Okay. So then these subatomic particles, the protons and neutrons and electrons combine, create these atoms. Um, so that'll be number two, atoms. Um, the smallest unit of matter that uh, retains all the chemical properties of the element. So basically something that's made and created and contains um, those properties. So example it says here that an atom of gold has the same boiling point melting point and density so anything smaller that doesn't have that melting point boiling point density could be just a subatomic it's not really an atom it's a subatom so it's right before that so it's what composes the atom itself okay so subatomic is before and then all of those combine to create an atom and then those atoms combine to create a molecule so we have molecules so number three um, two or more atoms chemically bonded together. So we're going to talk about interactions of these um, these molecules in the next class as well, and different bonds that bind them together, and things like that. So we start with these subatomic particles. They combine, create an atom. Different atoms combine, create a molecule, and then those molecules can create. Um, cell organelles. So we have our cell and inside the cell we got all these little organelles inside of it. It's our mini organs inside the cell. Okay, so we have so organelles. So they are specialized structures within the cell that perform specific functions. So they have their own little jobs. Um, so it's, it's kind of like little organs, like mini heart, mini liver and the mini intestine inside the cells itself okay. and then these organelles combine to create cells so cells um we have eukaryotic and prokaryotic remember we talked about this in the last class as well the differences between them a little bit um that's um that's kind of category number five so uh, like i said there's different in categories or classes I classes or courses that you will take that um, specifically talk about each one of these um, individually so this is more of the chemistry and now we're getting more into anatomy we're going to start jumping into cellular biology and things like that okay now with cells then we have tissues so it's just basically tissues are groups of cells working together perform the same function so they're really specialized cells that work together uh, for the same function okay. these are different types of tissues tissue cells in the body and that's going to be uh, also in the later weeks that we're going to talk it about um, then we're going to have organs okay so groups of tissues work together so now these groups of tissues start surrounding and cells and all start surrounding a specific organ that may has a specific job or specific function okay. 
very important too. So well. we can take anatomy and physiology courses as well. And we're going to talk about these organs getting together and creating an organ system. Okay. So remember, we're just building upon these and just going more and more complex. Okay. So it's just a group of organs that work together to perform. Um, let's do it like that to perform that. Uh, the same function or closely related function. And we have, we're almost done, we're almost there. Um, number nine, we have the organism. So these organ systems all combined to create this organism. So an organism would be an entire living entity composed of cells. That would be our organisms. Um, now remember how we talked about last class um, about uh, the the taxonomy and we have the genus and the species and and how different species can produce um, are are categorized depending on their different traits. So organisms that can breed and produce fertile offspring are called species. Okay, so we have these organisms, and then we have a lot of organ organisms get together to create a population. Um, oh. oh no, my computer is being a little, a little weird now. So we got population, so it's just a group of individuals of the same species that live in the same area. So this is where we t start talking about evolution. So these populations start adapting to change and then organisms start to evolve or change um, due to the environment or due to natural selection, okay? Then we're gonna talk about these populations start living in a community, okay? So different populations, organisms that live together. A, in a defined area, and that would be a community. And then we have two more left. We have our ecosystems. So we have different ecosystems in the world. So we have organisms together in a population, different populations create a community, different communities create an ecosystem. So you can see in this image, we have a plant community, in here, you can have a marine community over here. Um, so it's basically all living organisms in a specific area. Um, there's also non-living factors that affect them. So kind of like rocks, remember biotic is living. This is something biotic. The bio is a study of life, so biotic means living and a biotic means non living colonies. So in an ecosystem not only do we have these animals and populations of organisms, we also have non living um, factors that affect them, um, kinda of like the rocks or, or the water and things like that. And the last not least we have our biosphere. So our biosphere is basically parts of the earth in which life exists. Okay, so we have different biospheres where the earth is divided, div, um, divided into different sections. So parts of the earth in which life exists. So it contains the land, the water, the air, and the atmosphere. So we got the hydrosphere. We got the, um, oops, I can't spell. Um, atmosphere, the lithosphere, the atmosphere. So those are different spheres in, on on Earth. Okay, so okay, so that will conclude uh, the levels of organization and the different characteristics of living organisms. So um, make sure you study this. Um, you have questions. Remember on Wednesday we're gonna meet online. And uh, thank you for watching.